welcome grade 11 accounting learners. In today's lesson, we are going to revisit bank reconciliation and we're going to be doing a bit of revision. Right, so we're going to start off first with recapping on what is a bank recon. Now remember, we've done this already. A bank recon is a comparison between the business's records and the bank's records. So in other words, we take two documents, one document, which I will refer to as the external document, external, because this obviously comes from the outside. So we're comparing an external document to an internal document or internal records that was prepared by the business's accountant. Okay, so remember, bank reconciliation is a comparison between the bank's records and the business's records. Now, before we start off with a question, a very important aspect for you guys to remember is how do we go about doing a bank recon? So remember, guys, when you compare the bank's records to the business's records, you will come across certain entries or certain transactions that were either left out by the business or by the bank. So we obviously deal with those items and we record these items. So in other words, items that were recorded by the bank, so in other words, on the bank statement, but is not in the business's records, we then will record this as additional entries in our cash journals. Okay, you guys with me? Then items that were recorded by the business, in other words, items that appear in our internal records, but not on the bank statement, we will then record this in the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so in a nutshell, we've looked at what is a bank recon and how we're going to go about reconciling the two sets of records. Right, so I think let's start with a question and we can obviously recap on concepts that I've already covered during the course of the year or the term. Okay, so let's, let's look at the question that we're going to work through. So we are given an inexperienced bookkeeper of BC traders closed off and posted the cash journals for September 2013 before the bank statement for September 2013 was received. Okay, so immediately, let's look at the scenario that is presented to us. So we've got this bookkeeper, doesn't have too much of experience. So he has already totaled the CRJ. He's already totaled the CPJ. And he's sent or posted these totals in the general ledger. Okay, so he's already closed off the CRJ and CPJ and posted this to the general ledger. Now, why is that incorrect? You should be able to answer this. Remember, it is incorrect because he's got to firstly take into account the additional entries from the bank statement before he actually posts to the general ledger. So he hasn't done this. So let's read on. He balanced the bank account, in other words, in the general ledger, which showed an overdrawn balance of 1,979. Okay, so again, just to make sure that you guys know what's happening, the CRJ CPJ has already been closed off, and in the general ledger, we've got a credit balance. It's an overdrawn balance of 1,979. Okay, right, let's look at what is required from us. We will, or we are required to, complete the bank account in the general ledger by making all additional entries directly into the bank account. 
So in other words, we now need to complete the bank account. We don't have a CRJ, CPJ to complete, so we need to show all the additional entries directly in the bank account in the general ledger. Balance the bank account as at 30th of September 2003, and then in brackets, show the correct contra details. So contra details, I'm sure you're familiar with this term. Obviously, in the general ledger for every debit, there's always a credit, so that's what we're referring to here. What's the other account affected? Right, so that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is complete the bank reconciliation statement on the 30th of September 2003. Okay, right, so before we start with the first question, Obviously, we need to look at the additional information given. But even before I do that, I want to quickly recap on your bank account. Because remember, the first question, all additional entries will go directly into the bank account. Right, so looking at the bank account, what do we already know? Okay, so we know the CRJ and CPJ is already posted to the bank account, and it is in overdraft. The bank account is currently in overdraft of 1,979. So immediately, my bank account in the general ledger is a liability. Okay, so a liability on the debit side obviously decreases. On the credit side, your liabilities increase. So I'm going to start off by bringing down the balance before the additional entries are made. So the balance of 1,979. So 1,979, obviously on the credit side, because it's a liability, you should know this. So balance brought down. And remember, the date is obviously at the end of the month, because he's already closed off the journals. So on the 30th of September, and it's 2003. Right, so that's our opening balance. I'm using the word opening because remember, we still have to make additional entries. Now guys, often when we ask students to show entries directly in the bank account, they forget about basics. You can't do that. You can't do this in grade 11. Because remember, you've been doing this account now for years. You should be very familiar with your bank general ledger account. So what basics am I referring to? I'm obviously talking about entries from the CRJ and CPJ. So remember guys, bank is a liability. At the moment, we are owing the bank 1979 So every time there's an additional payment, okay, so every time we make an additional payment, that liability is going to increase, okay? We're going to owe the bank more. Every time we receive money, okay, so the moment we receive a deposit and the money goes into our bank account, we now owe the bank less. The liability is going to decrease. So on the credit side, obviously, we're going to record additional payments. I'm going to write that down for you. And on the debit side, we're going to record additional receipts. Okay, so often I tell my students that, remember, when bank is a liability, cash payments journal entries will go on the credit side, cash receipts journal entries will be recorded on the debit side. And remember, this doesn't change whether bank is an asset or a liability. Okay, you guys with me? Right, so now let's go to our additional information and let's complete this question. Okay, so our information that is given to us. Okay, so important that we are familiar with what's given to us. So we are given the bank reconciliation statement as at 31st of August 2003. So immediately I make a note that this is my previous month's bank reconciliation statement. So according to the previous month, okay, Right, there was an outstanding deposit. So there's one outstanding deposit. 
and there's one, two, three, four, five outstanding checks. So I'm just going to circle all of them because remember, I need to obviously take this into account when I'm doing this month's bank reconciliation statement. Now, immediately, I want to draw your attention to something. If we look at the check numbers, immediately we notice that, hang on, if I look at this particular check number, check number 1,477, and then it goes on to check number 2,454. So immediately, this check looks a bit old. Okay, it's been issued a while ago. Why is it still outstanding? Remember, an outstanding check means that the person who the check was issued to hasn't as yet cashed the check. So, the hence, it's an outstanding check. So, immediately, alarm bells go off for this particular check. Now, if the rest of the checks look fine, but obviously, I'm going to read, um, uh, take the rest of the information into account. Okay, so that's my previous month's bank recon statement. Okay, I'm not going to do anything yet. So, now I'm going to go to my additional information. Right, additional information taken from the previous month's bank reconciliation statement. So, the first bit of information that's given to me. Check number 1477, so this was the check that I was referring to, was issued to Canoe Club as a donation. The club no longer exists and the check must therefore be cancelled. Okay, so obviously, this check was issued a while back to Canoe Club, and for some reason, that club doesn't exist anymore, whatever the case may be, and they are now instructing you to cancel the check. So, in other words, they are telling you that this check will not be paid out because the club doesn't exist. You must now go and cancel this check. So, when we cancel the check, how do we go about cancelling the check? So, let's look at the two accounts that will be affected. Right, so the first account is obviously my bank account, and the second account would be the expense donations. Now, remember, when I issued the check, I recorded the check in the CPJ. So, when the check was issued, it was recorded in the cash payments journal. It was an instruction to the bank to make a payment. But the moment I cancel the check, so if I want to cancel something that was in the CPJ, it means I now need to reverse this in the CRJ, cash receipts journal. Okay, you guys with me? So when I issue the check, I made an entry in the CPJ, if I'm going to cancel the check, I'm going to now cancel this in the CRJ. I'm reversing the check that I issued. Right, so in my bank account, okay, so let's go to our answer sheet. Let's just quickly check the, uh, the amount. So the amount was 300, so I'm now reversing this. So in my answer sheet, okay, my first entry, so I would have made an entry in the CRJ, where I'm now cancelling this check for 300. Okay, I'm not going to put a journal reference, but remember, this entry would have been recorded in CRJ, and the other account affected would be the expense donations, which also will get cancelled. And remember, guys, the date is the end of the month, because that's when you're obviously making these entries. Okay, you guys with me? Right, so the first part completed, so let's go back to our information. And very, very important that we must remember to now tick this off. So we've now dealt with the first outstanding check. Right, so let's move on. Okay, the next bit of information. Check number 2454, so they're now referring to another outstanding check. Check number 2454 was issued to Drea Traders for packing materials, but the check was lost in the mail and must be replaced with check number 2501. No entries have been made. Okay, so if you look at this transaction, there's a lot happening. 
So let's start with the first aspect. I'm going to just change the color of my pen. So the first aspect is we've issued check number 2454, but this check was lost. And the instruction is that this must now be replaced. So the first thing that I need to do is the check that was lost needs to be canceled. Okay, so in other words, no one can obviously then cash this check. So I need to first cancel this check, check number 2454, and then I am going to issue a new check. So let's look at again how we're going to cancel a check. So I've spoken about this already. So when the check was issued, it was obviously recorded in the CPJ. So if I'm going to now cancel the check, I have to make an entry in the CRJ. So that's the first part. So let's go and find out the check amount. So check number 2454 for 1056 needs to be cancelled. So let's do that. So 1056. Okay, so 1056. Right, again, it would have been recorded in the CRJ and the contra account, it was issued for packing material. Okay, you guys can obviously write that in full. Right, so I've done the first part. I've cancelled the check. Right, and now let's look at the second part. The second part of the question wants me to issue a new check. Okay, so before I discuss how we're going to go about issuing a new check, I think let's take a quick break. Maybe during the break you guys can talk about this, recap on this. Remember, it is revision of the section. So let's see whether you can come up with how we go about replacing the check and what the accounting procedure is. Right, so I'll see you guys straight after this break. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's carry on with this um, additional information. So we, before the break, we cancelled the check that was lost in the post, and now we're looking at replacing this with obviously another check. So it must be replaced with check number 2501, and remember, no entries have been made. So remember, guys, once you issue a new check, so when you replace or you issue a new check, you've got to now make an entry in the cash payments journal, the CPJ. But remember, this check or the issue of the new check is being made on the last day of the month, on the 30th of September. And you've already received your bank statement. So even though you're going to now issue this check, you're going to record it in the CPJ, this check is not going to be cashed. Remember, a cash check is obviously when Dreyer Traders takes the check and to the bank and obviously cashes the check. So that wouldn't happen or that's definitely not going to happen on the 30th of September. So we're going to make an entry in the CPJ, but we will also show this check as an outstanding check for this month's bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so I want you guys to remember this. Right, so let's replace the check. So let's make an entry in the CPJ. So let's go to our answer sheet. So in our CPJ, we're now obviously issuing another check. So we're now instructing the bank to pay 1056 We would have recorded this in the cash payments journal, and the contra account would be for packing material. Okay, so remember guys, please do not confuse the entry that we just made on the debit side with the entry on the credit side. The entry on the debit side was to cancel the check. I'm just going to write that down for you. So here we cancelled the check that was lost and the entry on the credit side is for the new check that we've just issued. Okay. Right, where else do I need to show this 1056? I need to show this in my bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so obviously I'm not sure at this point where to show it. So I'm just going to make a little note for myself that I've got an outstanding check. 
okay, for 1056 that I'm going to have to record. Okay, so I'm just writing that down. So when I get to this part of the question, I can obviously fill this in. Okay, right, so let's move on. Next bit of information. Okay, the third information that's given to us, check number 2469 was issued to pay the telephone account but was incorrectly entered in the cash payments journal. The correct amount appears in the bank statement for September 2003. Okay, so let's firstly go to check 2469. Okay. All right, I'm just going to tick this check because we've cancelled this check. So check number 2469. So in our records, we've recorded the check as 963. But according to the information that's given to us, there's been an error. Okay, so I just want to quickly show you guys. So it was issued to pay the telephone account, so that's fine but was incorrectly entered in the cash payments journal. So we've entered the check as, just want to go back to the amount, as 963. Okay, so 900 and, 963 is where we obviously entered the check, CPJ, and I'm going to put a cross there because that's the incorrect amount. The correct amount appears in the bank statement. So let's go to the bank statement. Okay, so there's check number 2469. So the correct amount is 936. Okay, so that amount is the correct amount. Right, so immediately if we compare the amounts, we've entered it as 963, but the correct amount on the check 936. So immediately we, we notice that we have overstated the amount in our CPJ. So overstated, we've written too much. All right, so when we say too much, what is too much? So let's get our calculator out. All right, so we've entered the amount as 963 minus, the correct amount should be 936. So we've overstated a payment by 27 rand. So how am I going to fix that? So I've overstated the check by 27 rand. So in other words, in my CPJ, I've written 27 rand too much. So if I want to now remove the 27 rand from my CPJ, I need to make an entry in the CRJ. So that is how I'm going to now correct my error. Okay, you guys with me? So the check was overstated. I wrote too much. So how am I going to fix my error? By making an entry in my CRJ where I'm going to now reverse the 27 Rand. That was too much. So let's do that. So let's go to our bank um, account. Okay, so our bank account Right, so 27 Rand, too much in our CPJ, so we're going to remove that by making an entry in the CRJ for 27 Rand. And the other account affected will be the expense, which is telephone. Okay, right, you guys with me. Okay, so let's go back to our information. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Right, I just want to quickly go back. So we've now dealt with this error. Okay, so at the moment, where are we? So we still have two more outstanding checks. And let's see whether they're going to mention anything. And we've obviously got an outstanding deposit that we haven't looked at as yet. Right, so the next bit of information that's given to me. Okay, so the next bit of information is quite interesting. Right, so immediately, what are they giving me? They're giving me the actual bank statement that was received from the bank. So immediately, remember, this is that external document that you're obviously comparing to your records. 
Right, and I notice at the top I've got a deposit of 8,412, right, that took place on the 1st of September. Right, so if I go back to my previous bank recon, in the previous month, there was an outstanding deposit. For some reason, we weren't able to deposit this money into our bank account. But the bank statement is now reflecting that deposit. So on my bank statement, this amount is now being reflected. So all I've got to do here is, this is an easy one, is simply tick that off. Because previously it was outstanding, but now it's, it's been uh, deposited. The money has appeared. Right, so the next bit of information that's given. Okay, so I've got an unpaid check, I've got cash handling fee, and obviously more information. So let's now read through the next bit of information. After the bank statement for September 2003, was compared to the cash journals for September 2003, the following items had not been attended to. So obviously now they're referring to the actual bank statement, what hasn't been uh, reconciled. Right, so the first bit of information, the unpaid check, which was received from a debtor, P. Marais, in payment of his account of 600 rand, it was dishonored due to insufficient funds. So which check are they referring to? Okay, so if we go to the bank statement, we've got an unpaid check for 582 rand. Right, so this amount, obviously, if we compare 582 to the amount that was given to us, 600, so immediately we notice that this guy received a discount. Okay, he only paid 582. Now, very, very important, guys, we're doing a bank reconciliation statement. So remember, we are not interested in the amount that was owed. We are interested in the payment that we thought we received. So just going to write it down here for you. He owed the business 600 rand. Okay, he paid us 582, which means we obviously gave him a discount, a discount of 18 rand. Right, now remember that discount needs to be cancelled. However, because you are only doing a bank recon, I am not interested in the 18 rand. If I was completing financial statements, then I would take this into account. So what am I only interested in? I'm only interested in this unpaid check. Right, so how am I going to go about cancelling this entry? 582 rand, I thought I received this money, so I entered this in my CRJ. But the bank is now telling me, sorry, for some reason we can't pay you, Probably the guy doesn't have money, um, insufficient funds. So we now need to reverse this entry. So how do we reverse this entry? We make an entry in our CPJ, Cash Payments Journal. Okay, so that's how we're going to reverse the dishonored check. So 582. Okay, so let's go to our answer sheet. So 582. I recorded it previously in my CRJ, so I'm going to now reverse it in my CPJ. So 582 and the contra account will be debtor's control, or you could write the name of the debtor. Okay, right, let's move on. Okay, the next bit of information that's given to me. Okay, so I've now dealt with this. Right, the next bit of information, a stock order in favor of all shore insurers, 400 rand, is for the business's insurance and the rest for the owner's personal vehicle. So this is an easy one. Obviously, it's an additional payment. And because it's a payment, it would have been recorded in my CPJ. Right, so let's go back to the bank statement. Okay. All right, so we'll come to these entries in a moment. So at the moment, we're looking at the stop order 
for 600 Rand. Right, so this stop order is for insurance. Right, but remember the entire 600 Rand is not the business's expense because a certain portion is for drawings. Okay, so 400 Rand is for the business, which means 200 Rand is for the owner's personal use. So let's record this straightforward. Okay, so let's start with the 400 Rand. It's an additional payment. So 400 Rand would be for insurance. So that would be my contra details. And the balance, which is 200 Rand, owner's personal insurance. So the contra account would be drawings. Okay, right, that one's sorted. Okay, so let's go to the next bit of information. Okay, so the next bit of information given. The deposit on the 27th of September 2003 was deposited directly into the account by the tenant G. Solomon. Okay, so we have to refer to the bank recon again. The bank statement, sorry, not bank recon. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly tick. So we've dealt with this issue. We've dealt with this issue. Right, then we've got a deposit. Right, so we've got a deposit for 1,240. That's probably the deposit that they're referring to. So let's just go back and just make sure. Okay, so the deposit on the 27th of September. Probably don't have the dates there. Let me just quickly check. Oh, there we go. We've got the dates. Okay, so there's the deposit on the 27th of September was deposited by the tenant. Obviously, this is for rent income. It is a credit. It's a deposit into your bank account. So 1,240 in our records, okay, we would have recorded it in the CRJ, 1,240. And the contra account would be rent income. Okay. Right, let's move on. Next entry. Okay, so this one here sorted. The next entry to deal with. Okay, the deposit on the 30th of September 2003 was received from P. Cole, a debtor whose debt was previously written off. Right, so we've got a debtor who is no longer a debtor because his debt was previously written off. So remember, guys, this is obviously an example of bad debts recovered, which we definitely would have covered during the course of the year. So bad debts recovered. Let's go to the amount. Okay, it's on the 30th. Okay, so bad debts recovered 650. So another deposit that's going to decrease my overdraft. So let's go there. So 650 and the contra account. Often students write down debt is control, but remember that is incorrect. So bad debts recovered is the contra account. Okay, I think let's take another break. And when you guys come back, we'll complete the rest of this question. So I'll see you guys straight after this. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's carry on. Okay, the next bit of information, still dealing with the bank statement. Check number 11044 was debited on the bank statement. It was issued by CB Traders. Okay, so remember, this is an error found on the bank statement. So in other words, who made the error? It's the bank. Okay, so what exactly is the error? This is why it's very important that in the beginning, we make sure, or you guys need to make sure, that you know exactly who the business is. Okay, so I ju I'm just going to go quickly to the, um, the beginning of the exercise. Let's go to the information sheet. Okay, so we should find it here. Right, so remember, you are the accountant for BC Traders. Okay, that's us. We are BC Traders. So according to the information that's given to me, so let's go back to the information. OK, 
Okay. Right, so in terms of let's find the page. Okay. Right, so remember we are BC traders. There was a check issued by CB traders, not us, a check issued by another business with a very similar name, CB traders. And by mistake, remember, obviously, people that work in the bank, they also make mistakes. So by mistake, this check was debited to our account. So we've paid for a check, and, and obviously, it wasn't our check to pay for. Okay, so what are we going to do in this situation? So obviously, as the accountant, you're going to inform the bank. That's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to phone the bank and you're going to inform the bank that, hey guys, you made an error. Okay, so once we've informed the bank, we then will record this error in our bank reconciliation statement. Okay, All right, you guys with me. Right, so bank reconciliation statement. Let's look at how we're going to go about recording this error. Okay, so let's firstly look at the check. So the check was issued for 1480 And if you look at the check, can you see it's obviously a debit entry on the bank statement. So we're now going to tell the bank, put this money back into account. So in other words, credit incorrect debit. That's what we're going to now tell the bank. Okay, so let's do that on our bank reconciliation statement. So the check, 1480 Okay, I know we haven't come to the bank recon statement as yet, but I'm going to do this on the second line from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to write down, let's write it here, credit incorrect debit, okay? Or you can write down error. It, it all depends, obviously, on, on the way your textbook words this. So 1,480 will go on the credit side of our bank recon. Okay, right, next bit of information. Right, so immediately, what, what have we noticed? So we've dealt with quite a bit on the bank statement, but there's still a bit more for us to look at. Right, so let's look at cash handling fees, 1,000 or 137. Then we've got service fees that the bank charged us, 249. And then we've got interest that the bank is also charging us. How do I know the bank is charging me this interest? It, because it's appearing on the debit side of my bank statement. Right, so remember, interest and bank charges are always recorded separately. So let's quickly calculate our bank charges for the month. So cash handling fee, okay, 137 plus our service fees, 249. So that gives us a total of 386. So let's record that. 386. Okay, so 386 is obviously a payment that was made to the bank. So 386, and this would be my bank charges. Okay, right, next entry is for the interest that the bank charged us. So let's do that one quickly. The interest is 83 Rand, so let's record that. So 83 Rand, and that would be my interest on overdraft. Remember the instruction, use the correct contra account. Okay, right, almost done with the previous month's bank recon. Okay, so that bit is sorted, that bit is sorted, that was sorted as well. Right, now what is left? I've got check number 2471. Okay, and if I look through my outstanding checks in the previous month, okay, is that check here? Doesn't seem to be here, so let's just quickly double check the number. Oh, there we go. Check number 2471. I may have missed it. Okay, so 2471. 
Okay, so previous month it was outstanding. It now has been cashed. So all I have to do is tick the amount. Okay, I'm not going to record it because it's already recorded. Okay, so everything on this bank statement is now ticked. So what's left for me to do? Okay, all I've got to now do is add up, right? And the rest of the information I'm going to deal with on my actual bank recon statement. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So let's go to... Okay, all right, so it seems as though... My bank account is still going to be an overdraft, so let's see if we can quickly add up. We've got about eight minutes left. Okay. All right, so on the credit side, you guys can work with me. 1,979 plus 1,056 plus 582. I'm adding 400. Okay, plus 200 plus 386 and plus the interest of 83 Rand and that gives me 4,686. So let's now go to the debit side. Okay, 4,686. So to work out my new balance, 4,686 minus 300 minus 1056 less 27 minus 1240 I just hope I end up with an overdraft let's just check 650 okay yeah we do so 1413 so this is now my balance at the end of the month and then obviously guys my new bank balance 1,413 is what I end up taking to my bank reconciliation statement. So that is my new balance. Okay, you guys can fill in the dates. All right, seems as though we're going to finish the exercise, which is always nice. So let's now go to the second part of the question. Okay, bank reconciliation statement for September 2003. So remember, how do we go about starting this bank recon? We start off with balance as per bank statement. So we're going to start off with the balance as per bank statement. And then on the last line, balance as per general ledger, the balance that we just calculated. So I'm going to actually fill that balance in first. Okay, so we had a credit balance of 1,413. Okay, and now it's a matter of filling in the rest. All right, so remember, I'm going to come across an outstanding check, which I'll look through in a moment. So outstanding check. Just fix that. That's an error. I'm going to come across an outstanding deposit first. Okay, and then I'm obviously going to come across outstanding checks. So the rest of the information that is given to me, okay, so we haven't dealt with this. Right, entries in the cash journals that does not appear in the September's bank statement. So entries that we've already made, but for some reason the bank hasn't processed these entries first. So the first entry, there's an outstanding deposit of 4,899. So let's enter that first. Okay, so outstanding deposit, 4,899. Obviously would be recorded on the credit side of your bank reconciliation statement. Right, then we will also have outstanding checks that haven't been cashed at the bank as yet or not presented for payments. And remember here, you often have to go according to check number order. So your starting point will always be the previous month's bank recon. Was there an outstanding check that hasn't been cashed as yet? So there was one, just find that. So remember we've ticked everything except for check number 2473, which was 610 Rand. So I'm going to only enter the 610 because of time, 
you guys can obviously enter the rest. So 610 was the first check. Then the second check that, that was also outstanding, remember I made a note of this, 1056. And then if I go to my additional information, okay, we're coming to the end now of the exercise, guys. Okay, so I had two outstanding checks, check number 2489 and check number 2,597, not yet presented for payment, and then 3,465. So let's take these through, 997 first. So 997, and then there was one more check. Okay for 3,465, so 3,465. You guys remember, you obviously filling in the check numbers. Right, very last part in our bank recon, okay? The balance in the bank statement on the 30th of September is unknown. So in other words, they want us to calculate this balance Okay, so not difficult to do. The only hassle is we can't check whether we are correct or not because this balance hasn't been given to me. So how am I going to go about calculating this balance? Very simple. I'm going to obviously look at my total. So I'm going to add up the debits, add up the credits. Whichever is giving me the bigger total, obviously that will be my total. And I will then subtract to work out my um, balance that was not given to me as per bank statement. Okay, using the word balance quite a few times here. Right, so let's look which side's going to give me the bigger total. Okay, it looks like the credit side, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to total both. Okay, 4,899 plus 1480 plus 1413. So on the credit side, I'm getting a total of 7792. Okay, and if I add up the debit side, okay, let's get the calculator out again. So 610 plus 1056 plus 997 plus 3465, so that gives me a total of 6126. So obviously, the credit side is giving me, or the debit side, sorry, is, credit side is giving me a bigger total. So I got 7792, 7792. So to work out my outstanding balance, it is a debit balance. Okay, so all I'm doing is, let's just go back to our calculator. All right, so the total that I've got, minus, I'm not worried about the signs, so minus 7792, and that gives me a debit balance of 1,664. So 1664. Sure, we're done. Okay. Right, so guys, not an easy question. Some of the transactions were quite difficult, but hopefully this helped. And remember, in accounting, the more you practice, the better you get at the section. Right, until I see you guys again, from me, Mahesh Lal, it's goodbye and God bless.